Good record. All right, welcome to the Bitcoin Design uh, Merchant Product Review Call. It's part of our data collection gathering kind of process for merchants content in the Bitcoin Design Guide. Uh, today we are looking at Breeze Wallet, and we, we've looked at Breeze Wallet in the past before, just kind of focusing on it more from a uh, onboarding perspective, like uh, getting a user onboarded to a Lightning Wallet, and you know, getting their first channel opened and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, that was about a year ago, um, but I think today we're going to focus more on the merchant capabilities of Breeze. Um, Breeze is kind of interesting because it's kind of like uh, when you use it, it feels a lot like there's like uh, multiple apps inside of the same app. Um, so uh, it's, I don't know, I think we, we've talked about that in the past a little bit in just terms of how is, is it is it a, a good way to do that, having multiple apps in the same app? Should there be like multiple Breeze apps? I don't know. It's an open question. I think there's technical challenges. That's the way it is right now. Um, so we're going to look at that. Um, and yeah, uh, so what we're looking at right here is actually uh, I'm syncing my block filters with the Bitcoin network. I guess it's been a little bit since I opened my Breeze wallet and it has fallen a little bit out of sync um, with other Bitcoin nodes. So it has a ton of block filters to download. Um, if you don't know what that means, it's basically just uh, some data that it needs in order to kind of be able to trustly, trustlessly um, send lightning, send and receive lightning payments. So it's a long story. But I think we can just kind of minimize that for now and take a look. Um, Maybe it'd be good to kind of start with like the home screen here. Anybody, please ask questions and interrupt me and make comments whenever you feel appropriate. Otherwise, I'm just going to uh, ramble. Um, so this is like the home screen of Breeze. So if I just like uh, tap Breeze on my phone and open it up, this is kind of what I usually get by default. This is like a, you know, pretty, pretty standard looking Bitcoin wallet home screen. Uh, Got our amount of money and staff and BTC and dollars, and then you can hide it and all of that. Uh, this little indicator up here in the upper right lets me know that I'm sinking, lets me know something's going on, so I can tap it and then tap it again to hide it. Um, here's all my dumb little test transactions, just little 10 sat, 50 sat kind of deals. If we go up here to this menu up here, this is where we can kind of get to some of the other apps that Breeze has. Um, a podcast thing you can like you know stream stats to your podcast you know favorite podcast while you're listening uh what else got this whole app menu here where you can like integrate it with all these other services and stuff <laughs> but I, today what we're most interested in looking at is this point of sale app which is kind of cool that it, it, it's it's bundled um right in here uh so uh when i think who is it designed for? Um, the question at the top of my notes. Um, and then is this for e-commerce or brick and mortar? I, I think of it as being kind of for brick and mortar. Uh, but the, the thing about it is that like this, this is on a phone and uh, like Breeze is like a mobile first app. So um, I don't think of Breeze as being for like a, a person with like a, a permanent business that's that's set up like a like a coffee shop that's in one place all the time though so they, they certainly could use it i think of breeze as like it's the kind of thing if you're like doing a conference or a, a concert or you know a festival some kind of like ticketed event or something like that so you have to go and you have to set up a check-in table and um you you have to you, you know uh, give give a phone to whoever's running the table and it uh it has breeze you know uh, app on there and they're able to quickly start accepting payments on behalf of the event um yeah you could use it in a permanent business but just the fact that it runs on a phone it makes me kind of think that it, it, it's kind of like for these like kind of temporary event driven uh kind of kind of stuff um so i can go to my by just by default it goes to a keypad so that's pretty handy i mean think about it it's like okay how much do i owe you uh you owe me a dollar, and uh, I could switch that from a dollar to euros, sats, great British pound, yen, all that good stuff. Uh, so I'll just say a thousand sats, and then we can charge a thousand sats, 
And this is where we're going to run into a little bit of hiccups on this call. It's still syncing block filters, so I can't actually um, generate a lightning invoice right now because it's still like syncing with the network. So that kind of sucks. Um, I could see this being a problem if uh, this is like one of these kind of temporary events like you're thinking of. Um, uh, you know, like if you haven't touched your Breeze wallet and six months and then you decide you want to use it to do ticketing for a concert or something like that and then uh you know people are at the door and you're having to sync to the network that, that that could be a huge challenge um but also it's it's important to keep in mind for people that my breeze wallet i've had this thing for like many years and so uh, my channel with them was opened many years ago so i think there's a lot more like block filter data that my breeze wallet needs so like if if, if i were just just uh you know tell my ticketing person, hey, download Breeze app so we can accept Bitcoin payments, they would be starting from a fresh wallet and they wouldn't have to wait through all the crap that I'm waiting through right now. Um, so it would actually probably be a better experience for someone who's just downloading Breeze wallet fresh than uh, for someone like me who's had the wallet for a while. Um, so there's that. Um, there's also this like items view, which is kind of interesting. So here's like a test product that I made. I think it costs 500 sats. I must have made this like a year ago. Um, and I can add a new item. So I could say like, uh, uh, you know, concert ticket. And I'll say that it costs um, like uh, 15 bucks. And I could put in a SKU or whatever. I don't think this would really be relevant unless, you know, you have like an inventory management system or something like that that you want to use. Um, so I tend to wonder how relevant it is uh, for this type of user who's just operating it off of a, mo of a mobile phone, right? I, I don't I don't know if it's super relevant to them, but it's a cool feature to have. Um, if you do have an inventory system, um, even if you're not selling hundreds of products off of your Breeze wallet, you, you still might, if you had like, like, let's say you were doing like a pop-up, like you're a, you're a store, you've got like a thousand items in your inventory, and then you want to go do like a pop-up event somewhere else, and you take five items with you. Well, you might want to be able to track the SKU. So I can kind of see it. Um, like I said, skeptical, but I can, I can see it might be useful in some situations. So I added that. I could add another item. I'll say, uh, I'll add a t-shirt so I can sell the band's t-shirts as well. These are like super primo shirts or something like that. 35 bucks. Um, so cool. I have that. Um, and then I can, should be able to, here's my cart right here, like the customer's cart. This really is the, the cart for the customer itself. So I'm ringing up this customer and instead of typing keypad, I would just tap on items here. And then I would say, okay, uh, you and your friend both want to go in there. So I just tap, tap concert ticket twice and you want to buy one t-shirt. Okay, cool. Um, and then now, as you can see at the bottom, it says, uh, well, because Jitsi is like on the recording, no one's going to be able to see it because like, Jitsi has like an annoying little task bar at the bottom of my screen. But it says uh, charge 281,979 sats. Um, so that's cool where I can go to the cart and I can kind of see these. Oh, whoops, my bad. You meant three tickets. Okay, so I'll just up that. Um, uh, or you can hit the minus mode and deplete it. can add a note. I'm assuming that what would happen is I put this memo in here and that this would be what would show up in the lightning invoice memo for the customer. Um, I can't really verify that right now since again, I can't actually generate lightning invoices. Um, so we'll just have to like maybe figure that one out later. Um, there's another interesting feature I can highlight here, which is I can go to uh, preferences and go to uh, POS settings and I can set the payment cancellation which is interesting I'm I'm kind of curious to know if that is like the lightning invoice expiry like does the lightning invoice expire in 90 seconds um, if, if one 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 important reason for that uh, for anyone who you know might be wondering is you, you might be wondering, well, why would you want a lightning invoice to expire? Wouldn't it make sense if your lightning invoice um, just never expired? Um, for those who are new to lightning, uh, lightning invoices have to expire for security reasons. It's because 
uh, once once a lightning invoice is well really what it is is a lightning invoice can only be used once right you don't want to use the same lightning invoice twice because once an invoice is used twice there's a risk that funds could be stolen along the way so you don't want that so there's just this kind of standard idea that you you make your lightning invoices expire so that that way if one of them goes unpaid you don't have to hold on to the data for it forever um but you know, the, the, it's like, well, why not? Well, let's make it easier on the user. Why not just make your lightning invoices uh, expire after 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever? Um, because, you know, then you don't have to worry about sending somebody a lightning invoice and then they DM you back and say, oh, sorry, I couldn't pay it. It was expired. Well, the reason for that is because uh, uh, in this situation, uh, I've got a, a POS with all these items and they're priced in fiat. So the concert tickets are 15 bucks a pop. The T-shirts are 35 bucks a pop. And it has to convert that into Bitcoin when it makes the lightning invoice. And so we don't want a situation where uh, the price of Bitcoin has fluctuated in the 24 hours, 48 hours since the invoice is created and it's no longer uh, valid anymore. Or like, like, like if the price of Bitcoin uh, you know, dropped or something like that, then I'm not really getting the $25 that I thought I was getting with this lightning invoice. So, um, yeah, that's, that, that would be invoice expiry. So that's something you can change. Another thing I thought was interesting is what is it? Items list. I can say import from CSV or export to CSV. So it looks like if I try to import a CSV, that's going to overwrite the whole thing. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so that, like, that, uh, I don't know exactly, like, what format it's supposed to be in. That's the problem. Um, like, I'm sure on the Breeze website somewhere, there's, like, some documentation or something like that, but... I uh, I don't know exactly where that would be off the top of my head, but so anyways, we got a business address thing here. Again, I don't know where exactly that would show up. I don't know if that's going to show up in like the lightning invoice or whatever. Um, default note, I'm assuming this would go like in the memo field of the lightning invoice. So yeah, that's 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 sort of what, what it is right here. Uh, this is like there, there's far less uh, like stuff to explore than some of the other stuff we've looked into, like like Breeze and Tianki, or not Breeze, uh, BTC Pay and Tianki and all of that. Um, but I, I think that that's actually kind of nice because in this situation, I feel like it's just designed for people to be able to quickly make payments in person. So, yeah. I don't know. Does anybody have any thoughts on Breeze? Has anybody tried it out, used it, opinions? Anyone? I mean, I, tr I tried it out, um, testing out the functionality, adding items, doing various things. For me, uh, I, I think you really must have not synced, like you said earlier, your, I sync the application usually because it bugs me every few days or so that it hasn't been synced yet. Yeah. So mine has been up to date, so that goes pretty quickly. Um, I'm sure that's pretty annoying for some, um, you know, it, if you don't use it very often as a as a merchant and you have to wait, that's a kind of a it's kind of a silly um, or an annoyance potential. But otherwise, I thought it was pretty straightforward the the whole application. But it's it's you know I also didn't use it in context. Right? Yeah, I get you. Here's another interesting feature to manager password. If the manager password is activated, sending funds from Breeze will require you to enter a password. So that's kind of cool because then if you uh, you start accepting uh, like payments, you could hand this phone to an employee or something like that, and then they can receive all the payments that they want. They just can't send anything out. That's a handy feature. Yeah, and I would assume that that would apply to everything in the application. Like, let's say you go to the, not just the point of sale, but let's say you go into their their lightning um, application settings, it, it would apply to anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think it, reply, it, it applies to everything. Um, Stephen, I might have missed it in the, in, the, in the process you went through, but is there like an option to 
add in a list of most common items. Like let's say it's a ticketed event and there's like one ticket for 25, yep. um, I don't know, 250 sats and the other one's 300 sats. Yep, we looked at that. Awesome? Yeah, so I go instead of going here to keypad, I go over here to items. And then uh, these are some of the items that I added. So I added like a concert ticket and a t-shirt and then like. Nice. Uh, if, really I hit, if I hit the plus button, believe it or not, some bands still sell CDs at concerts, but I get it. Let's see. Even though no one's going to actually put the compact disc in the CD player, you got to you gotta make that money when you're on tour, am I right? Um, so, oh, wait, it didn't say that. And then, yeah, no, I can just like take this and if I just tap it, it'll just add it to the cart for me. Really nicely done. It's very nice. A lot of CDs. I'm just going to go like air dropping CDs to people. Um, yeah, don't need that many CDs. Check them out on Spotify instead. And when you add two items to the cart that are in different currencies, like one's in, in sats and the other one's in dollars. Does the cart um, checkout process automatically do a conversion? And then which currency would it choose in the, in the auto conversion? Oh, I mean, I think, I think they all just convert down to sats is the thing. Right. Um, can you see at the bottom of my screen where it says charge 433,775 sats? No, unfortunately the, the, um, sorry, the Jitsi, um, you know, um, it's blocking it. Oh, come on, Jitsi. Wait a minute. Now, can you see it? Yeah, perfect. Nice. Nice iPhone. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, sure, a lot of paste. Um, I mean, yeah, actually, let's take a look at that. That's a good question, though, because you see it says at the bottom here, it says, uh, like, charge 433,000, come on, charge 433,000 sats, and then it abbreviates it to $100. So let's see. Yeah, just to, I, I mean, I don't think a user would do this in practice, but let's just like try and break it and see what happens. Let's see what happens if I like price this one in yen for, for no reason. Okay. And then I'm going to add a test product to the cart, which is priced in sats. And then we should already have some dollar items. And then I'll add the Japanese object to the cart. And then if I go to the cart, <laughs> so now if you see at the bottom, instead of saying $100 in parentheses, it just is like, nope, sorry. It struggles with the conversion then. I think it's converting it accurately. It just, it doesn't quite know. I mean, it's, it's converting them all to Bitcoin, right? So yeah. I think it's, it's saying um, here at the top, it says, this is 40, uh, $45 worth of Bitcoin, 195 K sats. This is $35 worth of Bitcoin, 151 K sats. And then um, for the Japanese one, it says, okay, this is 40 yen worth of Bitcoin, you know, 13, yeah. 40 sats. So it's doing the price conversion, I assume accurately. It just doesn't know, like, you know, it's like if, if, if you have items in the cart, like priced in like three different currencies, like you could show that in one currency. Yeah. You could also show it in two currencies. But when you get to the point of displaying the price in three currencies, it starts to be like, okay, well, this is getting, Confusing. yeah, getting unreasonable. I'm kind of thinking, you know, like if this would be shown to me as a, as a, what's the right word, as a, as a. Uh, as a merchant, and I have the other person standing across from me at the table. Um, so then I would basically say to them, like, hey, that's 435,000 sets. But like, I don't know, I don't, like for me, I can't convert sets in my brain to dollars. So maybe in this use case, it might be nice to have something which they can click on, which will automatically be able to convert the sets to dollars and then convey that information maybe to users. Um, but then again, I don't know how common it is adding in items to a cart that are in different currencies. So we're really trying to break it here. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right. It's like, 
it, it would be confusing in that situation. But yeah, I think probably that you know, for most use cases, they're probably not going to price things either in like just Bitcoin or just their local fiat currency or Bitcoin and their local fiat currency. But I can't imagine a, a, a situation where somebody with one of these is going to choose two fiat currencies plus no. Bitcoin to price things in. And in that case, then the user interface will show it in the currency of the user, standard fiat currency, and then it's pretty easy, I think. Yeah. I am looking at, um, because I can't make invoices right now, I'm actually looking through uh, Pav's uh, Figma file from last year, and I'm trying to see where, oh, Docs for Merchant. Thanks, Christoph. Um, I'm trying to see where, um, what the Lightning invoice looks like. Just to see if it like gives you like a sum total or something. I don't think it like shows it like on the by the QR code at least where I'm looking at it here. But um, that's okay. I mean, if the person once the the person scans it with their phone, uh, they'll they'll be able to see the price readout on their own phone. But yeah, it's definitely uh, I don't know. It would be kind of nice if the the uh, like price, you know, was more apparent. I think. All right, let's check out these uh, sick uh, merchant docs. Yeah, I put I put two links in there. One is the any issues filed in the Breeze GitHub repo that include the word POS, and then the second was the merchant docs. And I I shared the first one because. Those are basically user requests, and you can see, you can kind of see what has uh, what people have worked on. There's some interesting stuff like, uh, you know, uh, an issue with currency display on um, on uh, printed uh, invoices or receipts. Uh, various things related to currencies or the display of currencies. Oh so wow. Seems like currencies is quite a big one then if it's like kind of interesting. Hey, um, I'm not sure if anybody can see this on their screen, but like I'm sharing my uh, GitHub, uh, I'm sharing my uh, view of GitHub and it's like on my screen, it's cropping it to the same aspect ratio as my phone. Is anybody else getting that? No. Nope. I, I see your full screen. Yeah, so oh, I... that's good. Well, no one in the recording is going to be able to see uh, the stuff on GitHub because it's it's cropping it to the same aspect ratio as my phone. <laughs> it looks so dumb. I'm going to take a screenshot and share this with you on Slack later. Yo, Jitsi is a shit coin. Um, okay. Yeah, feature request, support value, added tax, sales tax. That's interesting, yeah. I can see that being a, uh, a common uh, a common merchant issue. Um, just the ability to add it would be nice. Uh, improve POS UI on tablets. Okay, that's an interesting one. Let's take a look at that one. Tablets we usually use for cash registers have more than 12 inches. Breeze POS made you, mode UI is not read read well on this sizes. I wonder what the uh, issue this person's uh, having on the tablet. You know, sometimes you have a situation where like an app is only really uh, designed for an uh, iPhone or something like that, or it's just like designed for a mobile phone. And so then uh, when you try and view it on an iPad, it gets like scaled up. Uh, maybe, maybe that's what they're running into. Trigger POS transaction by URL from other app. Interesting. Or the cashier developer, they're interested in when Ellen pays on their cash registers. Uh, well, I can tell what's already going to probably for this one. This is probably going to be something there. Uh, I bet this is where the Breeze SDK comes in for stuff like this. Backup restore, doesn't it? Restore currencies, POS setting, username image. Interesting. So it just looks like kind of a bug with uh, just like the currencies, like in the, the items. Yeah, I, I read through that and it says they intentionally don't back up certain things that user switch toggles a lot because to avoid too many uh, backups triggers. Oh, interesting. 
I, I wonder why why that's a potential issue to to uh, to do too many backups. Yeah, because I would have thought it would just go to like uh, your cloud account. Like I just use a uh, like I think iCloud to back mine up or something. Any juicy deets and uh, the Breeze POS knowledge base? Let's see. Like it, they're 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 kind of selling it right from the start here in terms of uh, you know what what could be valuable to a merchant. Reduce the transaction times from minutes to milliseconds. Okay, full service. Breeze backs itself automatically to Google Drive, iCloud, or any web dev server. Manager password, okay, the items list. It's importing it, like I said, fiat display. Ooh, I want to see if, uh, what's this, transactions? To view a daily, weekly, monthly report of your sales for accounting purposes or others, click on the icon in the top left and then click on transactions. Oh, uh, that's right. I remember looking at this a long time ago. Um, I mean, this is, again, just like any like transactions for the whole wallet, but that's kind of cool. Gives me a daily summary. So zero today, of course, but that, that would be kind of nice for a merchant or end of day. Shows you how much, how many sales you've gotten. I could choose a date range and then get um, the sales for a specific date range. That's cool. And then whatever. And then here, I guess I could export that as like a CSV or something like that. Bring it into Excel or something like that. That's cool. To print a sale receipt, click on the print icon on the top right of the payment confirmation dialog. Oh, that's cool. I just can't get there. You know, I bet like like two minutes before this call ends, I'm going to be synced with the Bitcoin network. Um, uh, but uh, apparently there's like a way to like send it to like a receipt printer or something like that. I don't know, maybe we can see that on these old ones. Yeah, I'm clicking through my application and some older transactions here, but I don't see any print button. So charge whatever amount of sats, they add the item. Uh, okay, and then it's like scan to pay. Apparently it's supposed to be on like the payment confirmation screen. So I think after the way it sounds like in the documentation is that the customer scans this to pay. And then um, uh, after this is done and it says, oh, payment received, there's supposed to be some way to like, I guess there's supposed to be some print icon or something. Maybe I'll be able to look at it later. I don't know. Now, is there really nothing we can look at, like from a UI perspective, on what I'm about to start yakking about here? But I just think it's cool. So we'll talk about it a little, anyways. So they've done a couple of interesting things. They've got this uh, SDK that they're working on, and uh, you can, uh, I guess, like contact them if you want to get involved, you know, with it or whatever. And then there is, uh, you can look at it on GitHub. Uh, and I think, you know, I think it's still very much a work in progress, but it's, it's kind of interesting if you start reading through the docs about it. Um, I mean, they give like a, a little command line demo here. Uh, it's, you know, probably not very exciting for a designer, but it's basically like the software development kit for, uh, for lightning. And so it's almost like if you wanted to, um, add lightning capabilities into an ex your, your existing product or service or whatever. They've got this software development kit that you can use. 
And I think it, it looks like it takes a lot of the same functionality that Breeze has in terms of like being able to generate lightning payments and convert from fiat to Bitcoin and automatically open channels and all this other stuff. And so you could basically use their SDK to build your own product. I think that's really cool. It's kind of like LDK in a way, but um, it's at, at kind of like a higher level of ab ab abstraction. So like LDK is like, uh, I think, you know, very, you know, it's a lot lower level. It's development kit for building lightning apps, lightning products. It's flexible, all that kind of stuff. Um, SDK or the, the breeze on the other hand is like a little bit like higher level than that. It's like, it, I don't, it doesn't look to me like it's going to be nearly as like flexible, but it looks like it has a lot of like commonly used business functions built in like the fiat currency swapper and the LSP kind of thing. So that's super cool because I think it uh, could, um, you know, help a lot of businesses and stuff like, you know, merchants and stuff. If somebody else wanted to build a merchant POS, um, you know, so let's say they don't like Breeze's POS or, you know, we already have our own point of sale product. We want to just add lightning payments to it. They could use the Breeze SDK and start um, adding stuff in. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and then another thing is they have this thing they're working on called Breeze Cloud. And it's like kind of same deal. It's like work in progress. I guess you got to contact them, get early access, whatever. But the whole gist is like this whole problem that I'm running into on my phone with the block filters uh, failing you know, to sync on time. Uh, this Breeze Cloud thing is going to fix that because what it's going to do is it's going to run a green light node for you in the cloud. And so you as the customer are going to custody your own keys, but the node is going to be in the cloud and can only be, you know, unlocked or like, you know, funds spent with your, your key. Um, so that means the node will always be online. It'll always be able to uh, receive payments, even, uh, even if your phone's in your pocket. And uh, it, it's, uh, you know, you're not going to have to, you know, worry about resyncing every time you open the point of sale because the node's always going to be running. Um, so I could very well see that in six months to a year's time, I, you know, I don't know what their timeline is over there, but, uh, I, you know, all, all this stuff I keep, you know, complaining about the block filters wouldn't even be an issue for a merchant at all with Breeze Cloud. Um, so I'm really curious to see how exactly they're going to roll that out. I'm not sure if it's going to be like, uh, you know, just like another kind of toolkit like thing like the SDK or if it's actually going to be like a, a you know, a product that's ready to go for a merchant where like they download the pre Breeze cloud thing onto their iPad and get it set up and it's good to go. Um, so I'm curious to see that. But I think that this, this product could solve a lot of problems. So I'm excited to see where it goes. We're at ninety percent. Not too bad. <laughs> You're looking at my screen. <laughs> yeah, like I kind of just like just just want to do freaking one lightning payment on this call. Hmm. You, I was you, just digging through uh -huh. the. Go ahead. No, I was just rambling. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I was digging through the the Breeze Telegram a little bit, searching for oh. the term POS, and it seems like. Uh, lots of people are pretty happy with it. They're saying cool. it's all they needed for, for you know, I think mostly smaller events like yeah. some evening where they were you you know at some bar, so you could buy with with uh, with lightning, and that's all they needed. It worked out perfectly for their purposes. Um, yeah, so it seems like they they're getting good feedback on it. Uh, it also sounds like a dedicated point of sale app was in the works, but is being deprioritized due to those. Um, the what is it green light update yeah. i think um and they're not sure if they're going to get to it so it seems like the point of sale is uh, feature development is currently on hold mm, i got it but it seems like that's the thing it's like once once the green light thing is live it would like i don't see any reason why you couldn't take this app here and like um run it like just run it on a tablet or something like I don't know. What I'm trying to say is, like, once they get the green light thing, that's going to solve all of the problems for a dedicated point of sale, I think, or, or many of them. So that'd be that'd be cool. 
Yeah, I remember seeing like positive feedback on Twitter, like some person being like, "Yo, we did this like huge Bitcoin event or whatever." I think it was Amsterdam, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just said they like set up like a bunch of Breeze wallets or something, and just you know that's how they were doing all their ticketing, and it seemed to work out pretty good for them. Someone was also really pumped about the NFC feature. I need to try that sometime. Oh yeah. You know. Um... Stephen, I remember about a month ago, because um, Pav contacted me about this, he, he kind of kicked off an initiative about collecting data and pain points. At, there was an event, and then he he messaged in the, one of the channels saying that he was going to get someone to set up a website and collect feedback. I'm curious what type of feedback they collected um, and if they managed to collect anything, because that might also be useful in this whole um, exploration phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I know we can do a lightning payment on this call, everybody. It's always there. But yeah, I mean, I could almost see myself trying to use this at like events and stuff. It's pretty, uh, I don't know, it's, it's pretty handy. Yeah, but are there, are there any any other lightweight options like this out there? Well, you could you could give somebody Moon. That you know, if you're trying to onboard somebody really quickly, you know, I love Moon, but you have the whole you know, the backup process can be a little intimidating sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think with the like you know, write down this like you know cluster of weird letters and all that because they don't do seed phrases. So that's but that's interesting. But Moon is is another quick option. I think it just doesn't have the same like POS capabilities that, that oh, yeah, that's, does. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Uh, are there any other wallets with a similar level of uh, POS functionality? I really can't think of any. You know, I really mm -hmm. can't. I, I, I'll tell you. Okay, now I'll tell you one that works really good is uh, Ibex Mercado. Hey, we should do. I should I should look at that on, on a call sometime. Um, see if I can get access to that. I mean, it's it's a it's a paid custodial platform, um, and it you know handles a lot of the like Bitcoin fiat conversion, but it, it works really good in that like uh, I've I've seen people running it on tablets before, and it's like so easy. Like at Bitcoin Park, they they have it on a tablet in their coffee shop, um, and uh, I, I think I remember at one point they you know, they, they didn't have somebody like staffing the counter because it was like a little uh, event that they were they were hosting there. And so they, they, they kind of trusted uh, all, all of us. And it was kind of funny because like, you know, I would go like grab a drink from the fridge or whatever and then go to the tablet and charge myself like two bucks for it or whatever. Um, but it was very, I remember it was a very quick experience. Just go to the tablet, type in the amount you're going to charge yourself. It spins up a lightning invoice, you pay it and you're good to go. I don't know what the onboarding is for Ibex. Um, uh, like I mean, it's 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 great product in terms of it always works. I've never had a failed payment with Ibex. Used it at Bitcoin Park. I've used it at like a lot of different businesses in El Salvador. Full works flawlessly. But I don't know what the onboarding looks like. I've, I I haven't seen that yet, and I'm not sure if it's the kind of thing where it's like you can just download it or like sign up for a free trial account and just run with it, or if it's the kind of thing where you have to like you know, talk to a sales rep and blah, 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 blah. So I have, I have no idea what the onboarding looks like, but it's it's also a, a good, you know, little POS app, I'd say. <gasps> My block filter's finished syncing. Holy crap. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm just going to clear this cart because I don't want to charge myself for like $100 worth of crap merchandise. Um, let's uh, just do a keypad. Let's just do like a thousand sats. Okay, okay, that's nice. So there you go, Mo. That's what it looks like when you, uh, you, you uh, um, have the lightning thing. And I do remember from the settings that our timeout was set to 90 seconds. And so this was 130. So 
I think that settings option we're looking at was definitely a lightning invoice expiry kind of thing. Um, so let me uh, open up Albi real quick. Good to know that. So wait, somebody paid it? Oh, okay, thanks. I was going to pay it for my own wallet, but somebody else paid it. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh. This is the, the print receipt button we were just looking at, Christoph, or we were trying to find. So, so now we received the payment. I'm going to print out a receipt. And yeah, there you go. It's got a nice little document there. Ah, oh, got that nice payment pre image on there. Oh, a question that just came up as well is does it allow you to add in um, a VAT? So like like tax, does that is there like a setting for that in the in the settings so that you kind of add in automatic, I don't know, 15% or 20% depending on the country that you live in? Yeah, it looks like it's uh, actually an open issue uh, opened February 7th of last year on the issues page we were looking at. I just pasted the issue in the chat for you. So somebody's asking for in restaurants of Finland, it's mandatory to uh, print a receipt even if they don't want one. And I think if there was sales tax or VAT percentage field or predefined value selection on each breeze item, calculated values be exported onto POS. So yeah, it looks like there isn't. It looks like it's an open issue. Yeah, I wonder if that's not a little bit too complex functionality for this wallet. Is it, I don't know, is it really just some percentage that you put in and it just adds it and that's it? Or is there more to it? Well, I think that depends on the uh, country uh, that you're in, you know, or, or even the local, like the city. Um, like here in the US, it would be pretty easy in most cases because I mean, in this, all the locales around Atlanta usually have a sales tax. Basically, our version of that is sales tax here. Uh, they have a sales tax of around six uh, percent to eight percent, depending on like which town you're in. Um, so, really, would I mean, for, in that case, it would be as simple as just saying, uh, type in sales tax amount eight percent. Like WooCommerce and a lot of e-com platforms have this built in, where you just say, like, okay, automatically charge sales tax. And then you put in the percentage um, where it starts to get more complicated is that like there are like sometimes exceptions to that rule. Like if you go to a grocery store, things like groceries and food are usually taxed much less. So it might be like if I were to go to like Walmart, for instance, and put some groceries in my cart and put uh, like a, a T-shirt and a baseball bat and a couple of one dollar DVDs in my cart. All the groceries are going to be like a two or three percent sales tax, and then everything else is going to go to like a nine percent sales tax. So, if you're running a farmer's market stand, that would be complicated because you might have two sales taxes, like I don't know, depending on what you're selling. So, I, I don't know, maybe I'm talking myself out of it. Maybe it is more complicated. I don't know. Yeah, someone also in, in that GitHub issue, someone talked about it's. Some example, like it's reduced for food, higher for luxury items. So you would need to have per item that, and that would add a whole lot of complexity to the UI. Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's, it's the kind of thing that I think is totally feasible and doable. It's just like, do you want to do that on a little mobile app? Yeah. Like it, it, it feels totally natural when you're doing it in like big commerce or something you know, platform like that, because you're probably looking at it on a larger screen, like a desktop, because you're there setting up your business and, you know, you have to go through and set up your shipping options and your tax and your weight for each item and all that kind of stuff. So you, you just, you've got a lot more like screen real estate to work with. Um, all right, I got a question in the chat here. Hey guys, of course, so first, first time participating. Hey, welcome. Um, I have a question regarding the extra products, those being the podcast and apps. Are they really necessary with the wallet, or do they plan on branching out? Because I feel it's probably focused on the product. Just wondering. Yeah, we uh, we, we we talked about this a little bit, I think, on um, when we first looked at Breeze about a year ago. So, I mean, yeah, and my I, I kind of share a similar opinion to you. I think that it's very kind of complicated just having all of these um, like products bundled into the same app. Um, 
I think there, there's a technical reason for why this is the case. And we've run into this same thing with other Lightning wallets before. Um, the, the, the problem is, is that Lightning is such a like new technology that there's not a there's not really a standard way to uh, get a Lightning app on your phone to be able to talk to other apps on the same phone. Um, so like, I mean, a lot of times on your iPhone, you've got like what we call the share tray and you could go and like, uh, like, you know, like whether you're on Twitter or Gmail or whatever, there's usually like a share icon. You tap that icon, it opens the share tray and then you can choose another app like a text message or an email or a payment app or a mapping app or whatever. And you can send data all the way you know, to that app. Um, or and, and so that that works very well, but there's not a standard way to do that with Bitcoin and Lightning applications. And so there wouldn't be a way to like, even if they did make a separate podcasting app, I don't really think that they have a way to, um, you know, like get the like, let's say they had a wallet app and a podcast app. I don't think there's an easy way to get the wallet app and the podcast app to talk to each other. And um, same thing with a lot of these uh, other apps here, like. These are like third party services that refill Ellen markets, all these like their refill has an app, but there's no way to automatically like, you know, get the bit refill app talking to the breeze app or, you know, open up Ellen markets in a web browser and all that. So all the lightning app developers, they're kind of like temporary solution for the problem is just like, we're just going to put like some kind of like, uh, you know, app within an app so that you, you can do lightning stuff on all these different sites and services and it, it solves a problem. I think this actually probably just opens up a freaking web browser. Failed to call Ellen Markets API. I think it was freaking, uh, might have been Phoenix. No, I think it was a Blixt wallet, maybe. That just has like a little web browser inside of inside of the wallet so that you can go to websites that accept lightning payments and lightning interactions and stuff and you can use them inside of flix wallet which is like it's weird but i see why they need it it seems to the website yeah and i th yeah and and I, and I think that's where this this uh, green light really fixes uh, a lot of things a lot of these yeah issues. well no you you'd still have that same issue though christoph i think because like Again, even if I'm accessing green light, the green light solves the not having to sync block filters and being able to receive off online, like offline payments. But even if this app I'm using right here, like let's say they replaced the back end of this app with um, green light, it would still be a problem because like while I'm using this app on the phone, I don't have a way of like getting it to talk to like all the other apps on my phone. You know what I mean? Like. I don't have that like share tray experience where I can just like pipe data into another app. I wish Apple would let us add Bitcoin stuff to the share tray. I wish we could open up the share tray more easily from like front end web dev stuff. That'd be so dope. I think overall, just looking at it, um, Breeze has done a really good job of keeping things simple. Yeah. And it feels now almost as if, you know, stuff like adding in um, VAT and all those additional requests that have come through on GitHub might be things that they might want to maybe investigate and see if more people want that. Because, you know, if one user requests a feature for VAT, um, you know, it's, it's maybe not enough to make an entire design change on the whole interface, if not enough people need that or request that. So it feels as if they could move towards something a little bit more detailed and, and specified, but it seems like what they have now is just a smooth running car that everyone seems to get, make sense of, especially yeah. since what you said with regards to the, was it the Telegram channel that people will seem to be pretty happy with it. Look at that, ready to scan, NFC. Oh, 
No one's going to pay this? Gee, thanks, Internet. Yeah, so that's one of the things I, I have not understood with Greenlight. Um, if I under, from reading that blog post when it was announced, so you put the node on a server, so it's accessible from anywhere, it runs from everywhere. Correct. And then I think there was also a part about that there's some application on your phone that approves transactions, mm -hmm. but then other so other applications basically have read access to your node. So they can request invoices or whatnot, mm -hmm. but then there's some separate authentication application basically that approves the transactions. Something along those lines. It wasn't well, super I... clearly described, but I felt I thought they were trying to resolve that issue too. So your private keys are not split across many different apps; they're just in one. Your node is kind of the 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 access point for all mm -hmm. kinds of applications, maybe. Well, if you think about it, I'm trying to think um, in terms of generating a lightning invoice, you could, I think you could generate a lightning invoice without needing a private key because the main kind of data that you need in the like structure of the lightning invoice is the, like the, I think the node address or like, like the, basically the pub key of the node um and then you need uh, a payment hash so i don't see any reason why um, you would need the private key to generate an invoice unless i'm forgetting or, or missing something there i'm trying to think though would you need the private key to be able to receive a payment and i i almost think you kind of do need the private key to receive a payment because uh, I mean, let's think about it. The, uh, in order for the payment to be like truly received, the channel state has to be updated between your node and the node, uh, your channel partner's node. And so in order to, to uh, advance that channel state, uh, your node is going to have to uh, basically uh, sign some stuff with your channel partner. So I think, I think you would need the key in some way to be able to receive payments. And I'm not entirely sure what the uh, architecture for that looks like, but I mean, I think your, your basic assessment of it, Christoph, is yeah, you got a, a node in the cloud and a key on your phone, but I, I'm not exactly sure how it, um, how it handles the communication between like your phone and the, the node and all that. I really don't. Yeah, that's something that I, uh... I read through their announcements, thought about it just for one second, but I just haven't thought about it systematically through because, but I also feel like if um, to just move the cloud, the node into the cloud to make that fundamental re-architecting seems like just to avoid the offline problem seems like a small win. Yeah. I, I think they would, I, I would imagine they would only do this if they could also solve the cross app payments problem which is a, a very big one. If they solve both of all of these at the same time, then I feel like Greenlight makes it, makes a lot more sense. Cross app payments, you just mean like getting the apps to talk to each other locally? Yeah, so so we don't have to like squeeze all, applic all yeah. services into one single application, but I can have one wallet on my phone and everything can just talk to each other and can talk to my node. And maybe I just have kind of a, a payment authentication app that allow us, you know, for, I don't know, Netflix or Amazon yeah. or whatever else I have on my, my device, all the kinds of different applications to, to interact with without them really, without them requiring keys or direct access to anything important. Yeah, that's interesting, you know, maybe we need something like that. I, know, I haven't thought about it at all. I might be talking, talking out of my butt here a little bit. So. No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm starting to think about it too. It's like, there's got to be there's got to be some kind of spec for that kind of stuff. You know, it's like, you know, uh, Boomi and others have done a really awesome job, I think, with like WebLN. Um, so for anyone who's not aware, it's basically a little little JavaScript library. So if you're a front-end web developer, um, you can use the WebLN spec uh, to be able to make uh, like a website that requests lightning payments or, you know, wants to send you money over lightning. Basically, it's just it, it lets you do lightning-related things with your websites helps the website talk to like a lightning wallet. Um, 
So we have that and that works really well. And we don't really have a version. We don't really have something like that that works on like Android and iOS just because when you're dealing with like the native app, um, uh, like like engineering, it's just it's it's kind of a different world than the browser web dev world. And so I'd love it if there would be something kind of like WebLN or something like that that would just just help um, make that that kind of stuff a lot easier on a mobile device. That's one of those examples of an engineering innovation that also becomes a UX innovation. It, it improves, you know, it's 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 outside of the design and prettiness of the user interface, but it's a piece of engineering that imp improves the UX. Yeah. Well, well, we're about almost on the hour here, so uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm gonna uh, kill my. Uh, Green record and uh, all that. Um, yeah. All right. So, uh, any any final questions, comments before we uh, wrap this up? Not for me. Thanks for hosting it. Yeah, no problem. All right. Later, internet. <laughs>